Today we're going to be looking at how stresses and forces apply to a guitar neck. And so what we're going to do is take this modeled guitar neck, apply some forces, and check some movement and displacement of the neck and how it may relate to how strings and the truss rod may be applying some forces to the wood itself. So we're going to begin with our guitar neck and what I did is I did remove the truss rod so the truss rod is out of the slot you can actually include the truss rod it's part of the model environment but it will change the dynamics of how the neck will react so first off we need to put in some fixed surface so the bottom of the neck is going to be fixed and where it typically is fixed is at the neck pocket where the base of the neck is located. So to get into the analysis side of Inventor we're going to go under environments and we'll choose stress analysis. Now this stress analysis is not dynamic. This is a static stress analysis component to Inventor. If you want to get into dynamic forces and movements you're more than welcome to. It is a little bit more difficult to input the information and manage it. So simply we're going to place a fixed surface here at the base of the neck. True, about two-thirds of that neck base is, a, is what's actually attached to the guitar itself, but for our purposes we're going to apply the full base as a fixed surface. So I chose the, the surface, I picked Apply, and then I'll choose Cancel because I'm not selecting any other fixed surfaces. Now you may notice that I have a fret cut in at fret space number 9. Now why is it cut in there? Because it's about halfway for the whole neck. We know that fret space number 12, which is approximately here where my arrow is pointing, that is half way of the scale length which is from the nut to the bridge. So we're going to put a small force at fret number nine but most of our force is going to come from string tension off the headstock. So to put a force at a specific location the first thing you want to do is magnify. You'll notice that I've got some ability to control where forces go. So I'm going to go ahead and select force and you can see that I can pick the edge of the fret slot or I can pick surfaces. Well a force that's applied to a surface is actually pressure. So what we want to do is put a force or a single force at the center edge and it can be on either the front side or the back side of that fret. So I'm going to apply my force to that location. Now we have to look at the XYZ icon in the corner, otherwise known as a glint, and this particular item shows us that there is color coding associated with X, Y, and Z, and that the Y positive is pointing up. Well, I need to put a force in negative Y, so I'm going to go ahead and use negative vectors here. So I'm going to, so I'm going to go to a negative 8 pounds of force. That's it. So all we're going to apply is 8 pounds of force in the Y direction of that vector. So we get an icon that shows up. Now we also need to put some forces at the headstock. And the strings are attached to tuning machines that ultimately pull from the base of the neck. So realistically I could actually put the forces on the underside of the neck since that is where the tuning machines actually pull on the force. So to do that I'm going to go ahead and select the force. I'm going to select the back edge of each of the tuning machine holes and again using the edge tool as my key. Now in this case I'm going to be using vector components. Now we've got six selections the X direction and the Y direction I'm going to need to check here. So I'm going to lift up my, my neck to verify the direction and notice that the positive X is moving towards the end of the headstock so it's going to be negative X direction. We're going to put in a negative 100 pounds. Technically guitar strings are between 12 and 15 or 12 and 20 pounds of force. 
I'm going to use 100 pounds as a ballpark location. However, I'm also going to have a small Y component because the strings do go up over the nut and provide a small Y component. And I'm just going to put 5 pounds for that Y component angle. When I apply that and look at the front view, let me go ahead and move my, you can see that there's a slightly upward direction of the arrows. And so that gives us an idea of exactly what uh, we're getting in terms of forces. So we're going in a negative 100 pounds in the, net, in the x direction and positive 5 in the y. So at this point, what we want to do is run an analysis. We have to make sure that all the materials have been selected and wood maple has been selected for both the fretboard and the guitar neck. We've got our fixed constraint that's there, that's at the base of the neck, and we've got two loads. The small load at fret number nine and the larger load from the strings on the headstock. So let's go ahead and simulate it and see what the deflection of the headstock happens to be. So we have a variety of different pieces of information. We get the, the, the overall stresses of the system, but what we're interested in is displacement. So I'm going to double click on the displacement in the browser, and we'll notice that the displacement is 0 0.03798. So it really exaggerates the force when you look at this um, particular neck uh, and what, it, what its movement is. So in essence, what we're saying is that we're moving about 37 hundredths of an inch. Not a lot. Not a lot. About 38 hundredths of an inch. We typically have a gap at the ninth fret of about 0.15 overall. So realistically, um, the forces may be a little bit higher at fret 9 to push that down, which means that the truss rod may be acting at a higher force level to continue to push this down. The string forces will naturally move this up 0 0.037, but overall the neck stays at a slightly bent state uh, when you apply both the force in both locations. So realistically, we're going to do a couple of more tests and we'll find out whether or not that information is correct with the placement of the forces. So to do some testing, what we're going to do is change the value of our forces at the headstock. So instead of just 5 pounds vertical force, we're going to go ahead and put in 6 pounds vertical force. And you're thinking, well, that can't make that big of a difference. So I'm going to keep the same force vertically at fret 9, and we're going to simulate this run a second time. And what's going to happen here is that instead of a displacement of 0.3, we now have a displacement of 0.6. So we had about 0.4 before rounding up. This is almost 0.7. And that was just one pound difference in a vertical component. And so what that means is that if the strings will pull laterally at about 120 pounds, but some of that force also goes vertically. And so we, when we react to that force and measure that force, we can control the movement of that headstock. And so our ultimate goal here is to see if we can get the headstock displacement to 0 0.10. So to do that, we might have to again just the FY, the vertical component of our movement. You may also have to adjust the downward component of the ninth fret. And a combination of both, or just movement of one, may accomplish that particular task. So realistically, what we need to be able to do is determine exactly how much force it's going to take to make that headstock move the 0.15. So changing the vertical component to 7 pounds, just again, 1 pound difference, we go from 0.6 or almost 0.7 to 0.105. Bingo! We're now in the ballpark of the movement of the neck overall. 
because again remember we have a displacement of about 0.10 to 0.15 at fret number 9 for the relief that we have with a with the guitar neck so with the headstock traveling the distance of the relief flattening it out or providing a a flatter environment it will come in close to that value probably a little bit below our 0 0.10 at the actual location but it will come in close so overall our goal is to continue to adjust forces to calculate the values and again applying the forces properly and more realistically provides us a more accurate answer there are additional forces that occur with the strings since we may have string trees that hold the strings down the strings also go through the nut so the actual strings themselves are above the fretboard and not on the fretboard and so there are some some differences um, you could change you can also test the difference between having the force at the bottom of the headstock or the top of the headstock that may make an impact test it out see what you get we do have a post test which is going to require you to make some measurement judgments to get the headstock into a specific position we're going to primarily look at headstock values and not the forces at fret 9. Why? Because the impact of these forces, based on some experiments that you may want to recreate, could be negligible. May not be, but could be. Change the values here at the fret 9 neck location and determine if that's a correct statement or not. Have a great day, and good luck on stressing the model.